In the last scene, we had seen what might happen if you did not set altimeter datum correctly. In this video, I am going to explain on altimeter and how to tackle true altitude question for general navigation subject easily and quickly. Hello and welcome to Answering ATPL. Focus of this channel is to provide solution to ESA ATPL question and other aviation related stuff. Let me know down in the comment below if you are currently taking ATPL theoretical examination. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notified when I publish new video. In this video, I will explain on altitude. There is three type of attitude that you must understand to answer any true attitude question. The effect of temperature on altitude indication. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video because I will show you the solution method for true altitude question using flight computer including CRP5 and E6B and also the calculation method. Altitude What is altitude? By definition, altitude is a distant measurement in the vertical direction between a reference datum and a point or object. What is reference datum and how to set it? On the screen is an altimeter. These two windows are known as altimeter subscale. Here is where you set your altimeter datum. On the right hand side windows is the datum pressure level in inches per curry. It is used when you are flying in the United States. On the left windows is the datum pressure level in millibar. It is used when you are flying anywhere else in the world except United States. By rotating this knob here, you change the altimeter subscale setting. Here is a real working altimeter fitted onto an aircraft. If you rotate the knob in clockwise direction, the subscale value and altitude indication will increase. If you rotate the knob in counterclockwise direction, the subscale value and altitude indication will decrease. Now, let's find out how many feet will change for every 10 millibar change in pressure datum. First, I will turn the knob clockwise to 1019. The reading now is 270 feet or we can say that the increment in height is 270 feet. Now, I reset the altimeter back to 0 feet. Next, I will turn the knob counterclockwise to 999. The height decreases by 270 feet. The negative value on altimeter is a bit confusing. Why I said 270 feet? If you look at the relative position of the needle from start to finish, the change is 270 feet. And because of this, we can conclude that for every millibar change, altimeter will change by 27 feet. However, for general navigation subject, we just use 30 feet unless the question specify to use 27 feet. Type of altitude The first one is height. To understand height, let's look at this diagram. Here is an airfield situated on top left of the diagram. The pressure datum referred to the airfield elevation is known as QFE. If there is an aircraft whose pressure datum set to QFE of the airfield, the vertical distance from the airfield to the aircraft is known as height. The second type of altitude is indicated altitude. If the aircraft in our previous example change the pressure datum to QNH, QNH is the pressure level at mean sea level and it varies from time to time. The vertical distance from mean sea level to the aircraft is known as indicated altitude. The third type of altitude that you need to understand is pressure altitude. If the same aircraft change the pressure datum to standard pressure setting or SPS, the vertical distance 
from mean sea level to the aircraft is known as pressure altitude. Value of SPS is 1013.2 millibar or 1013.2 hectopascal. This pressure setting is set when aircraft climb past the transition altitude. To recap back, in this diagram, here is all the altitude type that you need to understand to answer true altitude question in general navigation subject. In the second part of this video, I will explain on the effect of temperature on altimeter reading and how you can memorize it. In order for an altimeter to give altitude indication, it needs to be calibrated to certain standard and the chosen standard is International Standard Atmosphere or ISA. Here on the screen is the graph for International Standard Atmosphere. If you look closely, this graph contains four different values which consist of pressure, density, temperature and speed of sound. What interests us is temperature and pressure. If you notice, for every pressure, there is a matching temperature reading. Thus, if altimeter is calibrated to international standard atmosphere, it will only be accurate if we are flying in this exact condition. However, the real condition rarely matches the ISA condition. Thus, if the temperature deviates from ISA temperature, the reading on the altimeter is not accurate. Here on the screen is a picture representing an area with a temperature profile marked by different color. Red represent column of air with warm temperature and blue represent column of air with cooler temperature. In this diagram, the temperature profile is warm, cool, warm. Here is an aircraft flying at altitude of 1000 feet. The aircraft will not change its reference datum. At the bottom of the screen, on the left is an altimeter and on the right is a radio altimeter. Radio altimeter is a device that indicates aircraft height from ground level. It did not use pressure, instead it uses radio wave to measure height. Thus, it will not be affected by temperature difference. When the aircraft travel toward area with lower temperature, its height relative to ground is decreasing but the altimeter remains constant. This is what I meant by the reading of altimeter is not accurate due to temperature deviation. We can make a conclusion, altimeter will overread when flying into area with lower temperature. Now, let's take a look at the opposite scenario. The temperature profile for this area is cool, warm, cool. If the aircraft fly from left to right, maintaining 1000 feet altitude without changing the reference datum, what do you think will happen? Correct, the height of the aircraft relative to ground is increasing when flying toward area with higher temperature, while altimeter remain constant. We can make a conclusion Altimeter will underread when flying into area with lower temperature. To summarize the effect of temperature on height, if we look at the aircraft flight pass, we can see that cool pool and warm dome. Or we can use this mnemonic as an aid memoir from hot to cold, don't be bold. For every 1 degree deviation from international standard atmosphere, altitude indication will be affected by 4%. Temperature lapse rate used to solve true altitude question is minus 2 degrees Celsius for every 1000 feet increase in altitude. The formula for calculating true altitude is true altitude equal to indicated altitude plus open parenthesis 4 multiplied by height above station over 1000 multiplied by ISA deviation. Now, I will explain how to solve true altitude question. I will give three methods of solution for the same question. The first method is by using CRP5. The second method is by using E6B flight computer or also known as Jefferson student flight computer. 
and lastly by using calculation method. This question was taken from Evision Exam Database question number 15160. An aircraft at flight level 150 overheat an airport. Given elevation of airport is 720 feet, Q and H is 1003 hectopascal, and outside air temperature at flight level 150 is minus 5 degrees Celsius. What is true altitude of the aircraft? Note, assume 1 hectopascal equal to 27 feet. This is what I meant when I said, question that specify to use 27 feet for every 1 hectopascal. Before I forget, 1 hectopascal is equal to 1 millibar. Some of the question we use hectopascal and some will use millibar. Now let's take a look on how to solve the question using CRP5. Like any other question, first I will list out information given by the question. Pressure altitude, flight level 150, airport elevation 720 feet, QNH 1003, OAT at flight level 150 is minus 5 degrees Celsius. To solve using CRP5, we need three things. One, pressure altitude. Two, indicated altitude. And three, outside air temperature at pressure altitude. We already have pressure altitude and outside air temperature. We need to calculate indicated altitude. We know reference datum for indicated altitude is Q and H. And for pressure altitude, Reference datum is 1013 hectopascal. If we deduct 1003 from 1013, we have difference of 10 hectopascal. The question specify that 1 hectopascal is equal to 27 feet. 10 hectopascal is equal to 270 feet. Since 1003 is less than 1013, the indicated altitude must be less than pressure altitude. Thus, indicated altitude equal to 15,000 minus 270 equal to 14,730 feet. Now, we have all three components needed to solve this question using CRP5. First step, at altitude window, align pressure altitude with outside air temperature. Altitude window is marked by the word altitude. The scale outside the window is pressure altitude and the scale inside the window is air temperature. Now, I will align 15,000 feet against minus 5 degrees Celsius. For the second step, we need to take a look at the inner scale. Inner scale represent indicated altitude. Here is 14,700. For the last step, read true altitude from outer scale. True altitude is approximately 15,200 feet. Now, we will look how to solve the same question using E6B. To solve using E6B, we need three things. One, pressure altitude. 2. Indicated altitude and 3. Outside air temperature at pressure altitude. It is the same as using CRP5. I will not repeat the same step of calculating indicated altitude. As per calculated before, indicated altitude is equal to 14,730 feet. First step, inside altitude window, align pressure altitude with outside air temperature. Altitude window is marked by the sentence for altitude computation. The scale outside the window is pressure altitude and scale inside the window is air temperature. For the second step, we need to look at the inner scale. Inner scale represent indicated altitude. Here is 14,700 feet. For the last step, read true altitude from outer scale. 
true altitude is approximately 15,200 feet. As you can see, the step of solving this question using both flight computer is roughly the same. For those who still not buying flight computer, I suggest you buy E6B because it is cheaper and the full metal construction means it is more robust than CRP5. I included the link to buy E6B flight computer in the description. Now we will take a look on how to solve this question using calculation method. I personally use this method during my examination. To solve using this method, let visualize the question. Here is an aircraft flying at flight level 150. We know this is a pressure altitude. Pressure altitude reference datum is 1013 hectopascal. Vertical distance from 1013 to aircraft altitude is 15,000 feet. We were given QNH of 1003. We know that QNH refer to mean sea level. Since QNH is smaller than standard pressure setting, mean sea level must be above standard pressure level. The difference in pressure between these two levels is 10 hectopascal. Since the question specifically mentioned 1 hectopascal equal to 27 feet, 10 hectopascal equal to 270 feet. Indicated altitude is the vertical distance between these two lines. As you can see, to get the vertical distance, this height 15,000 feet minus this height 270 feet equal to 14,730 feet. We were given station elevation of 720 feet. Here is a block of land above mean sea level and the distance from mean sea level to the top of green block is 720 feet. To get the height above station, indicated altitude 14,730 minus station elevation 720 equal to 14,010 feet. Now, we look back at the formula. True altitude equal to Indicated altitude plus 4 multiplied by height above station over 1000 multiplied by ISA deviation. We have indicated altitude. We also have height above station. We need to find the ISA deviation. To calculate ISA deviation, first we need to calculate ISA temperature at flight level 150. If you still remember, earlier I had told that temperature lapse rate is 2 degree Celsius per 1000 feet. I saw temperature at flight level 150 is equal to 15. The value 15 came from I saw standard temperature at sea level minus open parenthesis 15 time 2 close parenthesis. Why 15 time 2? 15 come from flight level 150 or 15,000 feet because lapse rate is per 1,000 feet we divide it by 1,000 thus we get 15 2 is from lapse rate and the minus had been transferred here I saw temperature at flight level 150 equal to minus 15 degrees Celsius we were given outside air temperature minus 5 degrees Celsius since outside air temperature is warmer than ISA, the ISA deviation is OAT plus 10 degrees Celsius. 10 degrees Celsius is the difference between these two temperature. Let me show you the calculation step by step. ISA deviation equal to OAT minus ISA temperature equal to negative 5 minus negative 15. Minus and minus is plus, thus ISA division equal to plus 10. Let's list back what we have. Indicated altitude equal to 14,730 feet. Height above station equal to 14,010 feet. ISA division equal to plus 10 degrees Celsius. 
Now let's put all these figures inside the formula. True altitude equal to indicated altitude plus open parenthesis for time height above station over 1000 time ISA division. True altitude equal to 15,290.4 feet. Looking back at the question, the answer we get from both flight computer is 15,200 feet and the answer from calculation method is 15,290 feet. The closest answer is B, 15,300 feet. If you notice, calculation method give closest answer compared to flight computer method. This is because by using calculation, we can use the elevation data whereas by using flight computer we can't that's why i prefer to answer this type of question using calculation method if you want to learn more about atpl or aviation start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss any also if you have any question or comments about true altitude or any atpl or aviation related question you can leave them down below in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time